Hey everybody, welcome to Now It's Dark. I finally watched The Human Centipede, but I didn't just stop there. I watched all three of The Human Centipedes because once I watched the first one, I had to see what else was going on. I got lots of notes. This is going to be a little bit longer of a review. Um, I am particularly, will probably talk the most about the first one and maybe the third one. Um, but if you've never seen the human centipede uh its subtitle is called the first sequence and i wasn't aware that this uh was a thing so i believe when tom six the writer director uh did this first sequence he had a trilogy in mind at the time so this is a 2009 r-rated film hour and 32 minutes about a mad scientist that kidnaps and mutilates a trio of tourists in order to reassemble them into a human centipede created by stitching their mouths to each other's rectums. He wrecked them, all right. He just destroyed them. Um, the, the main star, the mad scientist, is Dieter Laser, plays Dr. Hyder, Dr. Hayter. Um, I actually liked him very much. Um, this movie was not what I expected. I expected this to be a straightforward um, kind of just splatter fest kind of a thing, a little bit, actually a little grosser. Um, I think the buildup for this was uh, so much that uh, I really kind of expected it to be a little bit more. So there's a little bit of a, a larger storyline I'll read two pretty but ditzy American girls are on a road trip through Europe. In Germany, they end up alone at night with a broken car in the woods. They search for help and find an isolated villa. The next day, they awaken to find themselves trapped in a terrifying makeshift basement hospital along with a Japanese man. An older German man identifies himself as a retired surgeon specialized in separating Siamese twins. However, his three patients are not about to be separated, but joined together in a horrific operation. So the tagline is also 100% medically accurate. And uh, it's really kind of interesting. Um, the uh, Dr. Hyder's uh, house was very elaborate and um, had some really interesting artwork that I don't know if that was created for the film or if that kind of artwork actually exists. It would be kind of horrific if it did. Um, you know, surprisingly, this film has a lot of uh, awards credited to it. I'll just read off a few of them. In 2011, the Fangoria Chainsaw Awards uh, awarded this film Best Limited Release Direct Video. Um, and in 2009, winner of the Jury Prize Horror, uh, Tom Six, writer-director. 2009, same jury award uh, for the... This is the Austin Fantastic Fest, by the way. Uh, Dieter, Dieter Laser, Best Actor, well-deserved. 2010, Fright Meter Award, Best Actor, Dieter Laser. Uh, also, Best Makeup. The Scream Awards in 2010, winner, Most Memorable Mutilation. And the South African Horror Fest. Who knew there was a horror fest in South Africa? They also won Best Ensemble Cast in 2009. So uh, this movie has its merits. This uh, award-winning film, um, it's out there. This is AM, or, uh, yeah, IFC film. I watched this on AMC+. Plus. I literally signed up for a seven-day trial. Actually, I'll have to check to make sure I uh, canceled that. Um, just to watch this and and uh yeah it's crazy i i had never seen anything about it it was only ever word of mouth i never even had watched the trailer before i had seen like pictures and things like that you know just like in passing but never really gave this a thought that it was something that i'd be interested in um <clears throat> and it really boils down to the surgeon dr Hyder. he's just an animal lover he's just a dog lover they do a good job of subtly showing you his heartbreak from having lost his dog and i don't know how that correlated into creating the uh human centipede but i think it was his mental breaking point that he had done all these fantastic surgeries of separating Siamese twins and 
my interpretation is that the loss of his dog broke him. I think maybe like there's a whole backstory that's not explained about how he's, he had no other family. So I'm guessing that he sacrificed having a family and loved ones, wife, children, because he was dedicated to, to helping these Siamese twins become separated and things. And his only love in his life was his dog. Um, and, and, <laughs> or should I say dogs, because the dogs were the first, uh, I guess maybe trial experiment. And, uh, it's interesting that there are a few times like a photograph of the dogs, uh, lined up. And I think he's just really trying to recreate that. And, um, he chose humans because he didn't want to feel the same heartbreak if he lost the trio of dogs again, because I think he, uh, found at that point in his life little value of human life compared to the animals. I think that's a very deep psychological explanation for this movie. Um, the gore was not as intense as I, as you know, I had suspected. Um, the movie uh, pace was pretty decent. We have some detectives that are searching for the missing girls. Uh, I found that to be a little interesting because if these were two just American girls um, out on their own, there was a, such a short window of time that they would have been actually considered missing. And I find it interesting, you know, like they didn't, they weren't in like a larger group that I was aware of. So for anyone to have noticed that they had gone missing seemed a little odd. Um, but, you know, anyways, that's just the way the uh, story evolved. Um, uh, the, the, uh, what did they, did they say Japanese? I wrote down Asian guy. I had kind of hoped that he was going to be the, in the middle, um, because he was so annoying, uh, at, compared to the girls, uh, obviously, um, we do get some nudity in this, which was, uh, very, uh, good. Like this is the type of movie that you should have that, um, just be, not because of gratuitous sex, but because, or nudity, but just because uh, it kind of fit the uh, movie. But he ended up being the first of the trio. Um, and there is a, a famous quotable line from this. Uh, oh, shit, I have to shit or something to that effect. So this was made on a 1,500,000 pound budget. It didn't do good. <laughs> As expected, you would uh, imagine that not a lot of people went to the theaters. I think this has probably a pretty massive cult following because of the number of suggestions I got to watch The Human Centipede uh, when I announced that I was doing this series of, of catching up on movies. Um, so yeah, I, I, this movie, I wrote a two pages worth of notes. I think I, I'm going to just kind of skip forward. Uh, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't like as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it also wasn't uh, nearly as grotesque uh, as I had been told it would be. It didn't impact me uh, in a gross way. But I think, again, I'm kind of at that age where I'm a little desensitized from the gross factor. I definitely see how this could um, gross people out. Okay, let's move on to Human Centipede 2. Also written and directed by Tom Six, subtitled Full Sequence, 2011, so a couple of years later. Not rated, hour and 31 minutes. I believe this probably went right to, to um, you know, direct to video or wherever at the time. This was inspired by the fictional Dr. Hyder, disturbed loner Martin dreams of creating a 12-person centipede and sets out to really realize the sick fantasy. Um, Martin was played by Lawrence R. Harvey, and there's a lot of other people in this. This had a much bigger cast. Uh, some cast members actually returning from the first film in different roles. Um, so I thought that was a little odd. Uh, right off the rip with Human Centipede 2, I was pissed off. I just did not appreciate the opening um, at this time. I do now, but um, in general, this movie's theme and tone, I just didn't get into it. I couldn't get into it. I did find the character Martin to be disturbing uh, at times, but 
the amount of times that he's in his underwear and the dynamic with his mother, uh, the dynamic with his therapist or whatever he was, was all very strange. It was such a departure from the first film. I just didn't get it. And I, I, I mean, maybe I'm going to get some hate, but I, this was my definitely least favorite of this movie. The whole tone was so off for the human centipede. And I just didn't understand how this just guy who was kind of like a security guard or something. He was watching a monitor for a parking garage or a building and just crazy. It was a good twist. I mean, I'll, I'll admit it definitely set me back because I mentally had prepared for a movie similar to the first human centipede. And I was very curious, how could they uh, pick up from that ending? Because the ending is a pretty final ending. How could they create a second one? So I was thinking in the vein of like Frankenstein, where somebody finds Dr. Heider's book, his notes, his lab books, and they're intrigued by it. And they're like, we must recreate this. I can do it. Um, but it's not the case at all. It's Martin, uh, very twisted. And the first movie ended up having been just a movie that Martin watched. So when that description says fictional, Dr. Heider, it's because the first movie was a movie. <laughs> and that really kind of annoyed me. I thought it was, at the time that I watched this, a little weak. Um, uh, but I, maybe there's a, a underlying narrative about how uh, scary movies, <laughs> you know, affect a person who's... Uh, struggling with mental health issues, it impacts them. Uh, there was, again, probably the best part, and this will tell you how sick of a person I am, there was, uh, of the 12 uh, that he tried to create the human centipede with, there was a pregnant woman whose belly was exposed quite a bit. I uh, really didn't uh, like the... Uh, the setting, the tone, it was in black and white. Uh, the music, the, the background noise was annoying. Uh, they really played up on Martin's need of an inhaler, which is kind of crazy. And uh, probably the most relatable part of the movie was that for me. Uh, also, yeah, I probably look a little bit like him with when I'm just in my underwear, but I am at least stylish enough to not just wear tidy whiteies. That's all I'm going to say about Human Centipede 2, because I just really didn't like it. So I was so apprehensive now going into the Human Centipede 3, to the point where I actually looked this one up beforehand um, to kind of mentally prep. The first two movies I didn't do any research for, didn't watch trailers, nothing. The Human Centipede 3 came out much later, 2015, also not rated one hour and 42 minutes. So that made me nervous. I'm like, oh, this is going to be the longest of all of these movies. It is tag or uh, subtitled Final Sequence. Okay. I look at the cast. I look at the cast and I see Dieter Lasers back uh, as a character named Bill Boss. I see Eric Roberts is in this, and I'm like, Eric Roberts is in this? He needed a payday. Uh, he plays the governor. Robert Lissardo plays an inmate um, and super recognizable uh, guy. He's been in a ton of stuff. And Lawrence R. Harvey, the character that I hated in part two, is back as a character named Dwight Butler. And then there's some other characters that repri or, uh, reappear, but in different roles. But the, the, the casting perfection of this movie, this is what sold it. This is what got me the most excited to watch The Human Centipede 3. Brie Olsen is in this as a character named Daisy. And if you follow the channel, one of my favorite genres of film is adult films. And Brie Olsen is a uh, star. She's a She's a goddess, a star in the film industry that would be tagged as adult films. So I did actually get a little bit excited for this movie between Dieter Laser coming back, who I found very enjoyable in the first film of all those characters. 
Uh, anyway, so the whole concept here is taking inspiration from the human centipede films. Deuce. The warden of a notorious and troubled prison looks to create a 500-person human centipede as a solution to his problems. Again, written and directed by Tom Six, who also appears in this movie as, as himself. Uh, so again, <laughs> Human Centipede 3 opens up with a character watching Human Centipede 2. Uh, Dwight, the... Um, financial person, the assistant to um, the warden, Bill Boss, played by Dieter Laser, uh, is watching this, and um, the trouble is just enormous for the warden. He is unhinged to begin with. He is kook, and uh, this movie definitely plays up on the cheese factor um, more so than anything else. There's so many... Uh, just sight gags and just just bizarre, just craziness, just insanity. Uh, there is nothing about this movie that um, is taking itself seriously at all. I think the first movie uh, took itself pretty seriously, and the second just was so bizarre. I don't know. It was like an art piece, maybe. I, I don't even know how to, to explain it. But the... Um, third one is definitely embracing what it is, and it was just very cheesy. It was actually fun. The over the top acting of Dieter Laser just blew me away. It was crazy. I enjoyed him so much. Uh, violent, abrasive, vulgar. Um, his secretary, Brie Olson, uh, was there basically just to, as he said, drain his balls. And that is really it. Uh, Clayton Rohner plays the prison doctor. So um, after some trouble with the governor who's up for re-election and this prison uh, not really doing a good job with reforming and keeping control of the inmates, um, the governor says, get your act together or you're fired. Um, between the warden and his uh, financial advisor guy, Dwight, they decide to, yeah, let's embrace this human centipede idea. And because they're so crazy, um, they reluctantly get Dr. Jones to uh, buy into this uh, because he's basically being threatened. Um, Clayton Rohner is also very recognizable. I, I, the name isn't, and his IMD profile picture wasn't but when i saw him in the film i was like oh yeah that guy's been around for a very long time i've seen him in so many tv shows as, as just back around characters or you know special guests star status um so yeah he buys into it they reluctantly do the 500 person human centipede and they actually achieve it it's not um, it, it's more medically accurate procedure compared to the second film where he used duct tape and staple gun. Uh, this one was more of the surgical uh, aspect and some of the first people that were put under and, and transformed into the human centipede were some of the more unruly, unfriendly um, inmates. And it's just hilarious. There's so much going on. Uh, the governor comes back to see this monstrosity and just is just left with no words uh, other than he didn't necessarily approve. And <clears throat> yeah, and then he leaves the prison. The warden, Bill and Dwight, they are at a loss because this was their last shot. Um, uh, Bill Boss, the warden, he, Dieter, he just goes even more unhinged. and. <laughs> Uh, just thinks they're at their 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 end there. So he actually kills the doctor, who by that point had become so impressed with his ability to do this uh, that he was way on board now. Compared to at the beginning, he was doing it reluctantly. At this point, now he was just energized and excited. He wanted to do more. And uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting character arc, if there was one in this film. Um, the warden's character arc was just like a continual descent into just insanity. Um, 
Brie Olson's arc was her back. Um, and yeah, so the governor actually hadn't left the prison. He went to his car and thought it, thought it out and realized that this is what America needs more prisons to do this, that this was the way, uh, for him to introduce this into normal society and not just settle for governorship, but, uh, make a presidential run on this platform of, uh, how to handle crime and criminals and comes back in and uh the warden had already killed the doctor that performed the procedure but to his surprise the uh, governor gave him the seal of approval and uh yeah so uh, a crazy departure from part one but this was by far my favorite because at this point uh it was little about the actual human centipede in this movie for me it was really just the insanity of the scenes and the just the insane things that were said and done and Brielson, I mean, is going to get a win from me. Um, but so yeah, I finally watched Human Centipedes, all three of them, one, two, and three, all within like a two day span. I think I watched the first one; it immediately made me want to watch the second one again. I did do a seven day free trial on AMC Plus, uh, so I really had a short window of time to watch these, but. Really super glad I actually went all the way with it and watched the third one. I would um, would have loved to have seen a um, four, um, you know, but uh, Dieter Laser did pass away, I think, when I was looking this up in 2020. So RIP uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Dieter Laser, the mad scientist. So let me know in the comments down below, what did you think of the human centipede? Does it hold up still to this day? Is the shock value still what it was when this whole concept was, was introduced in 2009? Um, what do you think of Brie Olson? I'm very curious. Leave some comments down below. Thanks for sitting through. If you got to this point of this a little bit longer than normal review and have a great day. Row 18, plot 20.